As a Celtics fan, I was sweating bullets yesterday, not knowing if Hayward was actually going to sign or not. But Gordon Hayward has chosen to join the Boston Celtics, and while I think he is definitely going to make these guys a better team, I don't think that he solves all their problems as a roster. If we go down the collection of players they have, there are still some questions about this team, but I want to talk about the good as well as the bad. The immediate thing is when we look at how Hayward can just help out Isaiah Thomas, because Isaiah has been carrying the Celtics offense, I mean, definitely for the majority of last season. There were some close games that he would bail them out of with his ability to just attack one-on-one or in the pick and roll. And I think Hayward just gives Isaiah a little bit more help because Gordon would be the one other guy who can really create his own shot. Sometimes... As great as ball movement is and everyone moving around and setting screens for each other and guys cutting to the rim, you need the guy, or now two guys, who can just kind of have the ball in their hand and good things can just tend to happen. And so the Celtics now with their offense, they have two guys, you know, sometimes Isaiah Thomas can have the ball in transition and just hit his defender with a quick hesitation move and get by him. But Gordon Hayward's improvements to his own offense will just allow Isaiah a little bit more help in this sort of thing. Because sometimes when Isaiah has the ball in his hands, the defense just gets ready to bring as many help defenders as they can. And with Hayward, there's just more creation on this Celtics team. I mean, this is a team that thrives on ball movements, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And all that's great, but when you have a guy who can go one-on-one against Draymond Green and be successful, it's just a good addition. I also want to talk about Hayward's playmaking. I wouldn't say he's some natural passer who's going to lead an offense, but I think with this Celtics team, I could see him getting to like over four assists a game, probably. They have a bunch of shooters, and we will talk about how good of a spacing this team should have. But Hayward, he's not a one-trick pony. You know, if, if you're leaving someone open to provide some help for him or to defend him, he can find the open guy, even if I would never want him to be my point guard. But now, if we just look at Brad Stevens' offense, it's a lot of movement, a lot of player movement. The ball does not stick for very long. And if we look at Gerald Green in the first round against the Chicago Bulls, Once they made that adjustment, the Bulls' defense, they had no idea what to do because the Celtics had a shooter at every single position on the floor. So providing help defense was, at least for Chicago, impossible. Now, Gerald Green was not able to play as much in later rounds because he's kind of one-dimensional at this point. You know, he's a shooter who can sometimes attack the basket, not very good defensively. But against Chicago, it was still okay. And this was the effect the Celtics had with just Gerald Green entering the lineup. So picture what he was doing for them against the Bulls with his three-point shooting and providing spacing. And now apply all that to Gordon Hayward, a guy who is significantly better offensively, is going to hit those three-pointers that Green was hitting, but he's also going to do way more with the ball in his hands and attacking the rim. So I think you see what I'm getting at. But we have to talk about the other guys here, one of which is Al Horford, and I think Horford playing for the decent amount of the season the center position really opens up a lot of things for these guys. He's a very good shooter, so when he has the ball on the perimeter, the defense actually has to respect him. Definitely from mid-range, he shot about league average from three, but then he has so many other skills as a big man, as a ball handler, a passer, and this allows the Celtics offense so many options because... Horford can have the ball in his hands, or you can get him the ball on the low block, and then Robin Lopez can't just back up off of him, which opens up cutting lanes to the basket, which Brad Stevens used a lot this season, as Al Horford was one of the best passing big guys in the NBA. And I think this is what Brad Stevens and the Celtics really want to do, is they want to be able to run any sort of play they want to, and having a guy like Al Horford really gives you that ability, because... For a lot of centers in the NBA, like if Andre Drummond has the ball from right here, no one's going to defend him. They're just going to leave him to hang out at the corner, and you wouldn't be able to create anything off of that. Al Horford's a different story. 
And then if we look at the rest of the lineup, with Isaiah Thomas at the point guard position, Gordon Hayward playing one of the wing spots, Al Horford at the center position, the Celtics are basically going to have five guys on the floor in their starting lineup who can all dribble, shoot, and pass the ball. And the next guy in that equation would be Avery Bradley. His three-point shooting has really improved. He's shot very well the last couple of seasons from outside, so he provides you that spacing. And his improvements offensively have been pretty impressive. He's someone who at times can actually create his own shot now. He's not just a spot shooter. He does like his pull-up mid-range jumpers. As far as his contract situation, I mean, he's got one year left, him and Isaiah Thomas. If the Celtics re-signed them both, then they'd be at the luxury tax. We're just going to have to see what happens with that one. But then we get to Jay Crowder. And Crowder gives them a lot of options because I think he can play the small ball four effectively because he's a strong defensive player. But his uh, outside shooting, similar to Bradley, really gives them a lot of options. Shot nearly 40% from three in the regular season. Shot around league average from three in the playoffs. And he just knows how to be within that Celtics offense. He's never going to be a big-time ball handler, but he knows how to cut to the rim. He's efficient from pretty much everywhere on the floor. And I think this is the lineup the Celtics are going to go with. It's going to be Isaiah Thomas, Avery Bradley, Gordon Hayward, Jay Crowder at the four, Al Horford at the five. And it allows Brad Stevens to do whatever the hell he wants to do. As for the other guys, Jalen Brown fits into this mold perfectly, if you ask me, or at least it's going to fit perfectly into Brad Stevens' mind, because Jalen is another guy who can defend multiple positions, and that's a big thing with this, is being able to defend and switch, but also be able to do a lot of things offensively. So I could see Jalen getting a lot of minutes at some wing position. I don't know how many minutes Jason Tatum's going to get just because he's a rookie, but he's looked good in summer league so far. And that's just... When you put Gordon Hayward into that mold of just guys who can just do whatever in a Brad Stevens offense that's all about player movement and ball movement, the options are kind of endless. Do I think this makes the Celtics a perfect team? No, I do not. Number one, the rebounding is still going to be a problem. They did do a better job as the playoffs went along of just grabbing more rebounds as a team but still Al Horford is not a strong rebounding center and it's going to take a team mentality on that side of the floor if it helps Avery Bradley has grabbed a, a decent amount of rebounds for a shooting guard Gordon Hayward has a willingness to grab boards so does Jay Crowder but if you don't have that one guy who can grab 10 11 12 rebounds a game you're always going to be liable to give up offensive rebounds which means that teams that you are better than are always going to have a chance to beat you and of course that's just not a good thing and the other one is they still don't have a lot of rim protection now given the amount of athletes and guys who are just good defenders on this team I still think they're gonna be good at stopping teams from getting to the rim but of course it's not like you're gonna stop everyone it's it's impossible to just have a force field blocking NBA teams and star players from getting to the basket and they don't have a big time shot blocker or someone who can really defend the rim like that. And so that's still going to be a problem for these guys. And then also, even with the acquisition of Gordon Hayward, do I think they're better than the Cavaliers? Right now, no. I think Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum still have some development to go. They probably have some more moves to make. And LeBron James is just going to have to get a little bit older for them to really have a chance against the Cavs. Sure, could they give Cleveland some more resistance? Yeah, it's possible at this point, but I still wouldn't pick them in a series. They already beat the Wizards this previous season in a seven-game series, and the Wiz are still going to have problems with their second unit because that was their big problem. That, as well as Scott Brooks still not knowing how to manage playoff games very well. So I don't think the Wizards got that much better this offseason. They acquired Tim Frazier, but I don't think that's some drastic acquisition. If we look at the Toronto Raptors, they lost Patrick Patterson, who is a key piece of their uh, better rotations. But if it, the Raptors and the Celtics met in a seven-game series, I mean, that could be a tough one. I mean, you could have the rationale that the Raptors are still the second-best team in the East. They just happen to run into Cleveland in round two. Then again, the Celtics are the only team in the East who actually beat the Cavs in a game in the playoffs. 
Whether that really matters or not, eh. If we look at Miami, a lot of their season is going to depend on if Deion Waiters and James Johnson can replicate the seasons they had a year ago. I have some reservations about that. As for the Bucks, you know, if Jabari wasn't hurt, maybe, but Giannis is not going to have another guy who can really create his own offense like that. They still don't have a center who can really make a difference. Thon Maker made some good strides in his rookie season, but I don't want to crown him too quickly. So do I think the acquisition of Gordon Hayward makes the Celtics the second best team in the East? Yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say. Do I think they are ready to go up against the Cavaliers? No. 